Hello, hello everyone. Good morning. I hope uh, uh, you're all doing good and uh, your classes are going on well. Uh, have you completed all your uh, subjects or still uh, your classes are going on? Good morning. I think most of the classes are complete, ma'am. I think. Um, but I'm not sure. Last week I couldn't join. So oh, okay. I yeah 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 i think so because uh, even the other classes some of the subjects are done mm, uh, this particular class i think you have three uh, including today four more uh, four, no 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 26 is the last date right so two more sessions including today three more sessions Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So we'll we'll uh, uh, continue and we'll try to wrap up uh, the subject as well. Um, uh, let's let's pray and let's get started. So just want to ask somebody. Okay, Kiran says December full holidays. I know, good break after all the studying. Okay, so uh, one of you could you pray uh, and we will begin. I will pray, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Father God, thanking you, Father God, the new day, Father God, thanking you for all things, Father God, thanking you, your promises, thanking you, all subjects, Father God, thanking you, the class and ma'am and all the students, Father God, thanking you for that knowledge and understanding we are receiving, Father God, thanking you, all Father God. Father God, I'm just uh, giving to your hand, Father God, upcoming time, Father God, uh, whichever we are just going to learn, Father God, apply to your kingdom work, Father God, help us to understand the subject, Father God, give more revelation and your words, Father God, reveal more things, Father God, that we can apply your kingdom work, Father God, thanking you, Father God, all things, thanking you. Thanking you for ma'am and all the students, Father God. And those students willing to join, Father God, help them to join the class, Father God. Thanking you. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, Kiran. Um, we'll get back to John chapter 14. That's where um, we were and we were... Talking about, you know, before that, <laughs> in the previous chapter, we saw the meal that Jesus has with his disciples. And at that time, um, you know, him revealing that someone is going to betray him and Judas Iscariot also being there. And then the Lord Jesus taking time to uh, encourage the disciples. The Lord Jesus taking time to strengthen the hearts of the disciples because it is going to be challenging. Uh, because they put their trust in the Lord for uh, these uh, three or so years and uh, they expected him to be like a ruler, one of the, the political rulers. But uh, that was not to be. Though Jesus told them uh, several times that he's going away, that he will die, he will be resurrected. Uh, we're not sure how much of, his, how much of it they uh, grasped and they uh, understood the way uh, he wanted them to. But even then, you find that Jesus is helping them, uh, strengthening their hearts uh, and saying that, you know, he is going to, uh, uh, he truly loves them uh, and that they should be comforted in that. So we saw how Jesus said, you know, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If I go, I will prepare a place for you. So it's it's a message of hope. He's bringing them a message of hope. And he's saying that, uh, you know, they, they uh, can be encouraged because they have seen uh, Jesus and then they have seen the Father through that. Jesus has revealed the Father to them. And then we also talked about how he gives them the assurance of answered prayer. So he says, whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the father may be glorified in the son. So there is, uh, and all this is coming as an encouragement. You know? 
and preparing the hearts of the disciples. Uh, he knew that the disciples have to now live with um, great hope. So uh, he's telling them that his going away or that temporary separation, uh, they it will be sorrowful, but that there is hope, you know, beyond that. And that is the message that he speaks and in addition to that you know i said that uh, we are going to learn about the holy spirit because he talks about the holy spirit so you can take all these passages you know john 14 john 15 john 16 john 17 uh, as the the passages where john has obviously we are the ones who put the numbers to it but john would have written it continuously in his letter uh, but here you find the heart of jesus you find the uh, messages which are important uh, to jesus being spoken to the disciples okay so that they are able to go through that season when jesus is under trial and you know he dies and he's buried and all of that uh, but also it was not just for that, just for those moments. You know, there are messages in here which are helpful even now as we wait for the return of the Lord Jesus. You know, we know that after resurrection, after 40 days uh, of him being on the earth, he ascended up into heaven. So now physically we don't have Jesus, but these passages... That's what I'm saying. It was an encouragement for the temporary time when Jesus was away. But today, just look at what we we just talked about since morning. We said that uh, Jesus says, "I when I if I go, I uh, you know I will make a place for you. I have many mansions." Doesn't that encourage our hearts? It does. So it was for those disciples uh, who were with Jesus. Okay, but it's also applicable for us. The, the assurance of answered prayer that really strengthens us as well. So, you know, these passages you know, again and again, 14 to uh, uh, like uh, 17, you can just be reading it and gain strength from the encouragement that Jesus has given here. So, he also says, now verse 15, we, he talked about the Holy Spirit and he said, I will pray the Father, he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So, uh, so far there's been a great mention of the two persons of the Godhead. So much about Jesus, so much about the Father. You know, uh, we saw how Jesus said in the previous uh, chapter, you know, the Father is in me. I am in the Father. So the uh, the person, we've, we've understood, you know, who the Father is, what his function is, and the relationship. I am in the Father. The Father is in me. So we say, right, the unity, the harmony, the synchrony of the Godhead or the Trinity, how they are united and they are working together. You know, we saw all that. Now, the third person of the Trinity is being introduced in a very uh, uh, prominent way uh, from here on because Jesus knows that his time physically on the earth is over. But the disciples need somebody to depend on. Uh, Jesus could have left us only with the teachings. But he knew that there is a need for something more. And that something more is the very person of the Godhead. And this person who is being sent to every believer is the Holy Spirit. And where, does, where is this uh, Holy Spirit coming from? He says, from them from the father and from the son he says i will pray the father he will give you so from the father is proceeding this holy spirit helper uh, is is um, one second yeah just Okay. All right. So uh, here in the Greek, 
right the word helper is um, it's like parakletos parakletos you would have heard this helper is something like uh, uh, you know uh, if you understand it from the hebrew perspective it is something like a law, somebody who is there in the law court who is helping you you know fight your case and who's with you uh, so the helper of the parakletos you know another thing that you see here is it says another helper okay so that term another is allos allos parakletos so allos is of the same kind so what is jesus saying he's saying that he is going away but he will send somebody that somebody is going to be just like him or the same kind another of the same kind helper somebody who will be with us somebody who will stand by us so that is a, a matter of great strength and we will see this passage and soon you know in in 16 john 16 again he will mention about the holy spirit because it is that important because uh, we need the holy spirit to continue living here for christ so that's what he's saying he's saying look i am going to send you another helper of the same kind who will do what who will abide with you forever abide means live with you for ever now just think about this okay uh if jesus is here on the earth he could be with 12 of his disciples okay maybe more number of disciples physically he was available for them but talking about the holy spirit he is telling the disciples he will be with you for ever and later again we will see he says that if i go away it is for your advantage because the holy spirit can be with every believer okay and here another thing that you see is the uh, the continuity of the presence of the holy spirit he may abide with you forever in the physical body the lord jesus was limited he could only be with a set number of people but the holy spirit can be with every believer how long forever so that is the you know the the uh, greater purpose of god in jesus going away you know for us in our finite mind it might seem what is god doing why is he letting jesus go through this pain and suffering and jesus is going to be taken away but you see god's wisdom is greater than our wisdom so one is the plan of redemption will be completed when jesus goes through the pain second is he saying when i go away you know i i will pray the father he will give you another helper who's like me he may abide with you forever and little description about the holy spirit you know about jesus so many things we said the word became flesh dwelt among us we beheld his glory you know full of uh, grace full of truth we saw the description of the son of god son of uh, man jesus now the godhead the third person of the godhead the the holy spirit description spirit of truth meaning he does not lie whatever he communicates to our hearts is true he goes by the word of god he doesn't contradict the word of god so he is the spirit of truth so when i want to understand okay who is the holy spirit what is his function he is the spirit of truth whom uh, and also you know one more duty that he does is he dwells with you okay he is spirit of truth he dwells with you and one step further he will be in you see when jesus goes away i told you holy spirit can be with every believer with is one thing which is also great you know god somebody being with us through the journey of life is helpful but how much better if they can be in us and jesus is letting them know later on he will be in you so in john chapter 20 we will see the resurrected jesus he will go to his disciples he will breathe on them 
ki he'll breathe on them the holy spirit why because for one to be born again they need a regenerative work of the holy spirit okay in their spirit so that they can become a new creation and it is what the holy spirit does to regenerate right now jesus is not saying right now he is in you holy spirit no the holy spirit will come he will be with you and he will be in you so the advantage is for a born again believer the holy spirit is where inside not even next to but inside and that is how you know god wants to help us and he's giving us more assurance verse 18 he's saying i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you no such a such a deep assurance uh, it, nowadays when we see a loss in someone's life you know most of us with that heart of compassion we would want to be there for them and we would want to help them so we do our best but even if you know we are close to that person and we do our best is it possible for us to stick to that person all the time not at all but the assurance jesus gives us 100% it's like 100% guarantee not only will he stick to us all the time he says how much better that i will be in you okay it's going to be even better i am going to be in you so you know when you study about the holy spirit and our relationship with the holy spirit our fellowship with the holy spirit it really strengthens us because jesus is saying i am going to bless you in this way giving you the holy spirit the spirit of truth he will be with you and will be in you and then again you know he's encouraging the believers uh, the disciples he says a little while longer the world will see me no more so he's talking about his trial okay but he assures them you will see me because i live you will also live so he's giving them the spiritual perspective one is just now he said you're not going to be an orphan because i will always be with you uh, uh, or god will be with you through the holy spirit and then he says the world will think that i'm gone the world will not see me but you know i am with you and because i live you will also you will live also so he's talking about the spiritual truth uh, of his life never ending now how much of this did the disciples understand through their finite minds we don't know because what is he saying because I, he's going to die he's already told us but what is he saying because i live you will live also whether they connected it to what he said earlier i am the resurrection and the life so he knew that he is going to rise from the dead and we read in god's word you know he lives forever more the lamb of god he lives forever more nobody can kill him he is the author of life okay and he lives on forever and ever so that's what he's saying he's saying i'm going to go through all this but here is the spiritual perspective i will never die i will always live and because i live or that eternal life which i have you will also live you will also have eternal life so there is you know there is depth in every word so uh it, it, it's it's just you can uh you know talk about one line here and never close it okay so that is one of the challenges why uh, rushing through this book is is difficult okay but uh, we'll we'll do our best but god is that's what jesus is saying he's saying in the natural certain things are going to unfold but here is the spiritual reality i am the resurrection i am the life i am eternal i am going to give you eternal life then he says on that day you will know that i am in the father and you in me and i in him then he who keeps my commandment uh, uh commandments and he who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father you see john in his epistles says this right if we love god what should we do obey him so somebody who has god's commandments how do we demonstrate our love 
by loving God back with obedience. And also in John's epistles, he will say that, you know, love your uh, brothers, love the other believers as well. So because God is going to be with us in this way, we have to express our love, our faithfulness to God by being obedient to him. Uh, and then he says that uh, he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So it's, you know, deeply strengthening for a believer or at that time the disciples to know all this. He's saying he who loves me will be loved by my father. The disciples would have known, you know, how the father loved the son. You know, behold, my son, that's the voice that came from heaven. And uh, John got this revelation in his epistles. He read, oh, what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. So the great extent of God's love, the father's love, Jesus wanted the disciples to understand. You know, Jesus could have said that uh, I, I love you, uh, you know, like a mother or like a father. or That's the love. That's the extent of the love which uh, has been given to you. But no, he says, the way the father has loved me, in that way, you will also be loved. Okay, uh, and that Jesus also loves the disciples and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So all these are comforting words because soon the disciples are going to go through a lot of pain. Okay, uh, so Judas, another Judas is not uh, the betrayer whom we talked about. He says, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? So he asks a question. So Jesus answers him. He says, uh, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. So basically the manifestation of his love, the manifestation of his presence will be with the disciples. So that's what he goes ahead and explains. And he says, we will come to him and make our home with him. So the, uh, the experience of God's love and the experience of his presence is what a believer will have. Uh, which kind of a believer? A believer who keeps the word of God. A believer who walks in the commands or the instructions of God. And then, you know, later on, moving on to the last section here of uh, four, chapter 14, he's comforting, right? Continues to comfort. And he says, look, the helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he already revealed he's a spirit of truth. Okay, We've understood that. Now he says, he will teach you all things. So spirit of truth, teacher. These are the functions of the Holy Spirit. What is he going to teach us? Okay, he's going to teach us from what Jesus has already spoken. So he will bring to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you. You know, uh, now when we um, uh, talk about the gifts of the spirit, you know, people ask these questions, prophecy. What if the prophetic word is something so different that it has no connection to what Jesus taught us? Don't believe that prophetic word because when we understand the nature of the Holy Spirit, it is so clear. One is he's the spirit of truth. Okay. And we saw how Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And Jesus himself is the truth. Jesus himself is the word. So the Holy Spirit cannot speak anything contradictory or opposite to the Son, the Lord Jesus. He's the spirit of truth. And what will he teach us? From the truth. Whatever he says to us or the word that is released through us as a prophetic word. It has to be in line with Jesus Christ. If it is not in line with Jesus Christ, we can question which spirit is this, right? So two functions are very clear. He is the spirit of truth and then he will teach everything and bring to remembrance all the things that Jesus has taught us. And by saying these words, you know, he comforted them. Uh, he uh, also told them that he's going to give them peace. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world uh, gives. 
No? So let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, the reason I'm reading out these uh, words is these are all very important. Go back and meditate. Meditate on each one of these verses. No, we can just say, oh, this passage is uh, comfort of, of Jesus. Jesus comforted his disciples. Jesus gave them peace, told about the Holy Spirit, and that's it. We are done. But, you know, there's so much depth in every word that Jesus spoke to his disciples. So you just think in troubled times, what is it that he is giving them? Holy Spirit, peace. And he's saying, no, my peace so there is a different peace, not as the world gives you. So the world can give some kind of a, uh, uh, a, a, a soothing and, a, uh, you know, like it's a, a calming experience, maybe. Okay. But we know that the happiness that the world can give, or just think about this, you know, we're having a very stressful time at work. We go for a vacation and we come back. But how long does the feeling of re being rested in the natural last? Not very long, right? So it's a good thing, but that's the extent of the happiness or the, the if you want to call it, the worldly joy or the worldly peace you know, that we can experience. If you want to experience a deeper, firm peace, joy, a steadfastness, that can only come from Jesus. That's what he's saying. Look, whatever you're going to go through, it's very difficult. The peace of the world is not sufficient for you. So here it is. I will send you the Holy Spirit and also my peace. It is a lasting peace. It is a, uh, uh, you know, it is a real peace in the midst of the storm. That kind of peace will strengthen your hearts. And he says, okay, so please don't be disturbed. Don't be troubled. Uh, and he gives a responsibility to the disciples. He says, let not your heart be troubled. So is it possible for the disciples to let their hearts be troubled? Yes. It's all about our mind. You know, he, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So Isaiah 26 verse 3. So as long as I'm practicing keeping my mind on Jesus, I can go through a lot of difficulties, but I will still walk in peace. Okay. So I have the authority or I have the control over my mind and I can let it be troubled or I can prevent it from being troubled. So that's what Jesus is saying. I'm telling you all these things. You hold on to these things. Think about the Holy Spirit, you know, think about um, uh, my peace. Think about everything that I have spoken to you and that will maintain the peace in your heart. And then again, you know, he says that I'm going away, but I'll come back to you. Okay, don't worry, I'm going to rise up from the dead. And we know in the, in the greater meaning of what he said, even after the ascension, once he goes up to heaven, he will come back to take everybody who believes in him. Now, he also says, you know, if you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father. Again, you think about this. Who in their right mind, knowing that their teacher or master or loved one okay, is going to die? You know that they are going to die. Why would you rejoice? But Jesus is saying, see, if we understand the spiritual truth of things, we will rejoice. So when our vision is limited, narrow worldly vision, we can't rejoice because we are only seeing um, what is unfolding before our eyes. But when you know the deeper things of God, he says, you're going to rejoice because what is going to happen now? Jesus is going to the Father, but Holy Spirit is coming. Right? And we'll see again you know, later. He says, it is better for me to go because he's going to send the Holy Spirit. So there are many advantages Jesus knew if he goes away and the Holy Spirit comes. So that is the understanding with which he is saying, you would rejoice, okay, knowing that I'm going away. And then he says, I'm going to the Father. And he makes a statement here. The Father is greater than I. Now, based on this, you know, there are so many theories and people have uh, systems where they say that, uh, oh, Jesus and uh, uh, the Jesus and Father are not equal, but you know 
earlier, why did the Pharisees get upset with Jesus? The same Jesus said, the father and I are one. Okay, But here he is saying, my father is greater than I. So how do we understand this? You see, in the Godhead, from what we see in scripture, father, son, Holy Spirit, they are co-equal, but they have responsibilities. They have a position you know, by uh, way of their responsibilities. Based on that, Jesus is saying that my father is greater than I. So it does not make one bigger or better than the other, but in terms of the function, in terms of the position, in terms of the working, Jesus is saying here, my father is greater than I. Okay. So again, a relationship within the Trinity is being revealed to us. Okay. And then once again, you know, he's just comforting them. He's saying that, see, I told you all these things. When it happens, uh, you will be able to uh, remain strong that you may believe. And I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying, look, you're going to see all this trial. Who is the ruler of this world? Satan. He'll come, he will do his uh, act of uh, trying to destroy Jesus. But we know that Jesus is going to overcome that. And in that, he is also going to overthrow the devil or the ruler of this world, as he's being called, or he is going to defeat Satan. Okay, so that is the victory of Jesus that he is talking about. All right, now let's move on. He is going to teach them something more. So far, he said, okay, be, be strong. Uh, Holy Spirit is coming. Uh, then, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to give you my peace. You don't have to depend on the world's peace. Holy Spirit will be with you, in you. He is the spirit of truth. He will teach you all things, bring to remembrance what I've taught. So encouragement, constant encouragement. Now, again, adding to this encouragement, he talks about, uh, uh, he compares you know, the wine to himself. So John chapter 15, you all know this is the passage where Jesus, um, uh, he, he says he's the true vine and the father is the vine dresser. So what are some lessons that we can learn from here? We'll just go by the insights. Okay. So he says that he's the vine or he's the main branch and the father is the vine dresser. Fa vine dresser is somebody who works on the, on the, plant. Okay, so there is a role that the father plays. What is that role? He says, the father does the work of pruning. Okay, what is pruning? In gardening, we know that when we uh, want to uh, nurture a fruit bearing tree, okay, the best way to do it uh, is to cut off unnecessary uh, parts of the tree or the plant because the energy will be sucked up by the unnecessary parts. Think about a tree where uh, there are a lot of branches. The energy will go everywhere. So the gardener, what does he do? Unnecessary branches. Okay, the, the branches which have some um, flowers, they're going to bear fruit. He leaves them. Others, he'll chop it off. All the energy will go to the fruit bearing uh, branches and then the fruit will start appearing. So in that way, Jesus tells us that, you know, God's expectation from our life is, he says uh, three things. Jesus is the wine. Father is the wine dresser. We are the branch. Okay, we are the branch. So in this passage, we understand that the father is looking for what in the branches or in the life of a believer. The father is looking for fruit. What is fruit? The outcome of our lives, okay? Uh, whether we are revealing Christ in our attitudes, whether we are uh, becoming more like Jesus, whether we are doing the work that God has called us to do, because this life is given by him. We are living for his purposes. Are we living our life for, for Christ to fulfill what he has called us to do? These are the things that God is looking for in the believer's life. And that's why, you know, we are told that the father is a wine dresser. So he's watching, okay, really, is the character of Christ being formed? Uh, is there uh, outcome, you know, in terms of uh, uh, 
uh, your your purpose are you living out god's purpose if so what does he do that tree which has ha huh, it's doing well he will cut unnecessary things from that tree or prune that tree so in the same way even in our lives you know god removes unnecessary things or pruning another word for pruning is cleansing he cleans he says okay ah uh, this you are you are doing this in your life it's unnecessary okay remove that remove this you know there are different things that god may lead us through a process of we say sanctification or purification so that we can become more and more conformed to the character the uh, the life of jesus okay it's that is the work that god is doing in us so that's what jesus was telling his disciples you know what god is making you more like himself the father is making you more like himself so the passage is about bearing fruit he says uh, abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself see fruit god is looking for fruit unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me so it's quite clear that uh, god wants fruit okay so that we have understood the second main teaching from this passage is abide in me abide in me again is dwell the holy spirit he will come what is the advantage jesus can be with 12 people because he is human fully human right he is limited but the holy spirit can live with everybody he will abide with you forever so abide means living or staying i'll abide in my house i don't visit my house i abide in my house in the same way he's saying that when we are connected to god you know uh in a strong way it is at that time that we are able to bear fruit so one was about bearing fruit second is about connectedness so you will see again and again there are uh, verses it says he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing so as long as we are connected abide 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 again if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you so us being connected to the main branch have you seen any branch which is growing on its own it can't it will die because the source of life the source of nurture is cut off okay so in the same way he says one is god is looking for fruit in each and every believer's life if he doesn't find fruit he's disappointed right but he's looking for fruit and how to bear this fruit connected abide in me or be connected to me and then he also says uh, uh, let my words abide in you meaning stay connected to my words those words should be in your heart if that happens then you will bear fruit okay then you will be able to fulfill god's purpose for your life and he says anyone who is not abiding or connected what is the problem you know life will be cut off from that branch it can't be alive for a long time so it's told here you know a, a branch if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt so we we cannot produce the results that god wants us to produce on our own so that's why he says without me you can do what something no you can do nothing so two main insights from this passage is that he says uh fruitfulness is important connectedness is important so when we are connected to him then you know we are able to bear fruit one more result of being connected he says uh, if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you so he saying there will also be answers to prayer when we are deeply connected to god okay so these are the key thoughts that are coming out of this passage and then you know, he continues to 
encourage the disciples. He says, as the father loved me, I also have loved you. Remember, he said, uh, the father will love you. We've seen that earlier. Again, he says, how does the father love you? The way he loved me. So God's love for us is a great love, which uh, uh, is talked about time and again. You know, the depth of God's love, the height of God's love. Uh, we, we don't fully grasp it, but God loves us with the same love with which he loved Jesus. Okay? Isn't, that, isn't that an awesome uh, reality? And he's telling the disciples, you know, because of such a love that I have for you, stay with me. Remain connected to me. Now, is it possible that when the disciples went through the hard time, they could uh, get discouraged and they could uh, go away from Jesus? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But Jesus is telling them, you know, whatever happens, you please stay connected to me. Because, you know, it's not, you know, I have not treated you just like, you know, master and slave or teacher and student. That's all. You know, relationship is not limited. Uh, to that, but this relationship is so much deeper. The love uh, that that is there is such that you know it is the original love of the Godhead. Okay, so please stay connected to me. And then he adds on. He says, "If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love." People ask the question, you know, John 15, it keeps saying, abide in me, abide in me. How to abide in God? We saw earlier, if my words abide in you. So one way to stay connected to God is through his word, understanding his word, uh, you know, believing his word, speaking his word, living his word. That's a way in which I can be connected to God. Another way in which I can be connected to God is keeping his commandments. So you obey. What God has told us, we have to walk in that. So two ways in which I can be connected to God. So again, he uh, you know, brings them to a place of strength. He says, listen, I've told you all these things so that you will have joy. You know, that my, my joy may remain in you. That your joy may be full. So he wants them to be strong. And he wants them to uh, uh, go through the hard period knowing that everything has been done for them and that the father actually loves them and then you know, he also says that uh, uh, he wants them to love one another you know whatever we are reading in these these statements is what john speaks to the churches isn't it in the epistles the way god loves us keep the commandments okay and uh, 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 he Again, he adds here, love one another. How does God how does God love us? The way he loves Jesus. How to love our brothers? Verse 12 here, you love one another as I have loved you. How did Christ love us? Sacrificially. So that is why he continues and he says, greater love has no one than this, that he, that to lay down one's life for his friends. Jesus died for us. Okay, so that was a sacrificial love. He says the, the right way to love other brothers and sisters, believers, is sacrificially, just the way Christ loved us. And you see the relationship that he has with the disciples. He says, You're not my slaves. He says, You are my friends. Uh, for that, you know, you need to keep my commandments. I want to have that relationship with you as with friends. Okay, So the closeness, the connectedness that uh, Jesus has with the disciples is, you know, uh, uh, something very, very special. It goes beyond just telling them what to do. And then he clarifies it again. Verse 15, he says, no longer do I call you my servants. So you see, it's not a superficial relationship because he says, servant does not know, you know what the master is doing, but I've called you friends. So Jesus is calling us friends, which makes us so close to him. That all things that he heard the father, from the father, I have made known to you. So he basically says that he wants to share his heart with the 
believer shares heart with the disciples and he says that he has chosen us and he has appointed us to bear much fruit so our lives must be useful that is the reason you know why god is uh, working through us so our lives must be useful and as long as we are connected to him our life will be useful and later you know, he uh, continues to encourage them he tells them look uh, in this world people are going to hate you so he's talking about times of persecution uh, when he spoke about this maybe the disciples had no clue but you remember john uh, acts chapter 9 when you read about the way uh Saul is persecuting the church it's like you know he's getting permissions he's throwing people in the prison both men and women so very difficult times of persecution were about to come and Jesus is telling them very soon trial of Jesus will, will take place where the authorities will oppose him okay but even these disciples are going to go through similar times of persecution later but in the midst of all that he says you know uh, don't don't worry you you just remember everything that i have told you be strong in me um, and you know continue strong in me and here in this passage on you know, the closing was 26 again a reminder of god about the holy spirit so he says when the helper comes you know the paracletos he comes uh, whom i sent from the father he will testify of me or he will um, uh, bear witness to everything that i have spoken to you okay so don't worry you're not going to be alone uh, and uh, don't let your heart be troubled or you be you make it a point to go through all these things in a strong way so those are the words of comfort those are the words of encouragement which jesus speaks over his disciples okay now we will continue with uh, john chapter 16 so just in line with the encouraging word just in line with uh, uh, you know him preparing their hearts he goes on to uh, comfort them once again he says look people are going to um, put you out of the synagogues okay uh, and the time is coming where whoever kills you will think that he offers god a service so he's saying difficult difficult times are coming do you remember the people who killed stephen they believe that they're doing god a service saul later he he came to be known as paul but even saul uh, he was giving assent to the murder of stephen and he also out of his religious zeal to do what is right he was persecuting the christians so jesus is revealing all this and saying this is the way in which people are going to persecute you they'll think that they are doing god a favor but i am letting you know all these things so that when these things happen you will know that i have already warned you about these things and that you should not be afraid or you should not get discouraged okay uh, so again you know he will continue to share more about the holy spirit and encourage their hearts what we'll do is we'll go for a break now we'll come back and we will continue with the remaining of the passage from john chapter 16 i hope it's okay everybody you're able to understand okay great all right so let's go for a break then we shall be back and continue from here thank you